I'm starting. Go ahead. Ready? Yo, what's going on, guys? It's Kenny here, back with uh, another deck profile at the regionals. This time I got seventh place with the new deck in uh, Cyberstorm Axis, uh, Super Heavy Samurai. Uh, before that, I would like to give a lot of uh, shout outs to all the people I tested with. Michael, who just uh, got his first top, Ed uh, behind the camera. He actually let me uh, use these KMC white sleeves. So that's pretty sick. And then uh, shouts to obviously uh, the Gatekeepers Discord and all my friends I test with. Um, I almost played the same list with uh, Brian Chen, so shout out to him uh, as well. Then uh, everyone else just flipped uh, TCG and then uh, my uh, sponsor, Sunny Hobbies. Got the hoodie here. It's hot as fuck today, but I do have the hoodie, Sunny Hobbies. All the links down there will be down in the description below. Big shout outs to Sunny. And then shout outs to uh, my Metafly as well. I know it's a mouthful, but if you made it this far, then you probably care. So um, yeah, I do uh, Metafly. Uh, they'll be down in my description below. I play a lot of this format and I can help you guys get a lot of coaching for the upcoming Nationals uh, format. I've had, I've helped a lot of people that already top their Nationals format. It's a very affordable price and helps me out as well. So uh, with that being said, let's go on to deck profile. All right, so start off with uh, the starters. We got um, standard stuff, uh, three Soul Piercer, uh, three Bike, three Okashi, and uh, three Wagon. So I'll see some lists recently have been uh, cutting this down to two, but uh, I do still like three a lot because it gives you just a chance to play. And throughout like a long tournament, you're gonna start breaking a lot. It was really funny because round one against um, uh, Mathmech actually, I, uh, Bricked. I won the die roll. I bricked. I opened Fenrir and my Fenrir got uh, Valored. And then I was like, I was actually so upset because it was like, dude, you Valored my Fenrir. If I just summon anything, it's full combo. But I, I didn't have it. So uh, I definitely would still play three wagon because it just gives you a chance to play when uh, you don't draw poor. And if anything, I want to play more starters, but these are the only ones like uh, available. So yeah, standard stuff, all that. Uh, two big uh, Benki. Uh, Benki's cool. Um, probably write them out. I thought about playing three actually because sometimes you want more Wakashi, but uh, it's just a brick if you draw it. So like, two is fine. Yep. Uh, one Peacemaker. Uh, I see a lot of people play three, and I really like the idea. But I kind of treat this card as like a call by the grave for this deck, or like a designator, because it's not really a. It, it is a starter that you can draw it and it plays by itself, but it loses to everything, and it's not even full combo. Uh, but it does play through hand traps, so I do side extra copies actually, because I think of it as siding like designator and called by, uh, essentially in this type of deck. If that makes sense, because you just want it going first to play through more hand traps, and you really don't want to see this going second really, because these take up the slots that could potentially be more hand traps and realistically what are you winning with when you're going second more copies of this or like actual hand traps like it always actual hand traps so i just play one side the extra when i go first treat them like called by and it's pretty solid uh the booster part of your combo scales part of your combo this is part of your combo all this generic standard stuff yep and then regulus obviously you want to search it i still play tunneler uh, i see some of the builds nowadays play like omega and stuff to do the loop but uh, I'm a super boomer player. I've been playing like the game forever and this card says draw two. And so I just think this combo is like way better um, than the Omega stuff because uh, I actually notice when you're doing the Omega stuff, it kind of loses to like nib and stuff because like when Omega hits the field, sometimes it's on the fifth summon. And I didn't really like that. And I really like uh, this combo because even if you draw this going first and you pitch it, it actually plays through hand traps kind of nice. Or it doesn't really play through hand traps, but like if you have this in grave and you pitch it, even if you draw it, right, it's like, you stop my play, but I just recycle my deck. I draw two, I have hand traps, I stop you, and then I play, like, a brand new game again. So, like, these cards are fine. I mean, at the end of the combo, when you have six cards in hand, you just can't lose. So I don't think you need to do anything fancy for your combo. Like, I'm doing the standard, uh, I haven't mentioned it yet, but I'm doing the standard, like, Appaloosa Regulus combo. Show us uh, the combo yeah, afterwards. So that's, like, it's fine. I really like Tunneler still, even though a lot of people are playing the new stuff. I still think this combo is still solid. And then she's secure, you can search it. And then, best card in my deck, I'd probably play three of this card, actually. Uh, this card's, like, absurd in this deck. Um, it just, like, does a lot of things that this deck can't do. And also, you win random games when you, like, brick and you open Fenrir. Because Fenrir with four hand traps, like, Fenrir plus all these guys, actually carries <laughs> sometimes crazy enough. Because it lasts you, like, a few turns where they'll pass back and forth. And then in a simplified game state, you draw any one of your starters on, like, turn two, turn three, or whatever. You just instantly win the game. And then if you have this on top of your combo, it's just like impossible to like lose. Like this card's insane. It clears all the monsters you're annoyed with. It's a starter. It like does everything. It's good going second. It's good going first. Like if you uh, hand trap them like twice and they have like a mini board, right? They'll like, even if they open good and you hand trap them twice and they still end on some kind of board, this thing just cleans up the remaining uh, board left. Uh, so I'd probably find a way to bump this up to three if I had more like space. But I don't know what I would cut. Yet, but this card was crazy. 
Uh, card of the format. Uh, no, I never got to bike and then gamma and then droll. People actually played around it. Uh, and I played around everyone else's gamma. Uh, like round two, I played a guy who like went bike. He searched Wakashi, placed Wakashi in the scale, had droll, and I waited forever. And uh, he had uh, two dead gammas in hand. So like um, no one actually played into this. So I towards later on the day, later throughout the day when I noticed people didn't play into the card anymore, I just took this out when I went first and it was just like way better. But uh, that could change in the future, depending on what people do. But for right now, I don't think this card is good going first. The people are just way too scared of getting gammaed on, like, the droll on the bike. Because they know if they do that, it's auto-lose. Like, you turn your droll from an auto-win card to an auto-lose card, so no one really wants to take that risk. And then, uh, card of the format, three droll. Funny enough, I actually thought about cutting this, because um, it's only really good against super heavy. And I didn't think that that format is like all super heavy. It's like some super heavy. And Michael actually uh, cut this card. We were talking about it. And um, I wanted to cut this card to play more actual cards that like uh, take away resources like Mourner and stuff. Uh, but in the end, it was kind of like a comfort choice. Uh, this card was fine. And it was good for me all day. I played a lot of Mathematic and like three or four mirrors. Uh, so it, it was fine. It was really good. But um, uh, if the meta changes where there's less Samurai, obviously, um, I could see uh, cutting it because like, I still win a lot of games with other hand traps that aren't Droll. And honestly, the reason why you play Droll to begin with is in theory, it's a one card hand trap that stops their whole turn, right? But realistically, nowadays, people who are playing like multiple, like uh, uh, this guy. So like, even if you have Droll, you still need another hand trap anyway. So like, it's kind of the same thing as opening two other hand traps, you know, if that like kind of makes sense. But uh, it is a little bit crazy to cut Droll, but I do think it's like actually like, um, it's actually like something you could like actually consider, even though it sounds a little bit crazy to cut Droll in this format. And then three Ogre, cards crazy, really good. I played hella branded, so it was kind of bad, but I branded, but I actually use this against like um, Cartesia and uh, Fallout of Albahaz, which is like pretty good actually, yes. even though I thought it would be yes, bad. Uh, but it was actually kind of nice against branded. So funny enough, I'd actually keep this in. I think it's pretty good into the modern branded, branded like decks. Uh, two Valor. Uh, standard, I think it's better than Mourner because I don't like Mourner on summon, even though I get that you can hit early cards in the standby uh, and like stuff like that. But just the fact that this can't be this can be used at any time, unlike on summon, I think just makes it a lot better, honestly. And then two Ash and two Nibiru. I was conflicted on which hand traps to play, so I kind of just play one of each. And typically, I don't like doing this, I like kind of going with three of everything. But I realized that, like, a lot of times, I, I've actually never lost a mirror uh, with this deck IRL before. And I think the reason why I d haven't lost a mirror is because, uh, funny enough, when you play two of everything, the best hands against Super Heavy are always two hand traps. But it's not necessarily two hand traps, it's two different hand traps. You like, you can't draw double Ogre and stop their turn. You can't draw double Nip, you can't draw double of anything to stop their turn. You actually want a variety of hand traps, right? Like, you don't want to actually max out everything because if you draw duplicates of the same name, like anything, even like two Valors won't stop them. Like, you need Valor Ash, like, you need like different names that do different things because they have like the Scarecrow, then they have like the Wakashi, and they're all like interactable in different ways. So when I draw my opening hand, I always have a combination of hand traps because I do play two of. While it does sound a little bit incorrect, I think you do need different ones. So that's why I ended up playing uh, different hand traps. And I notice every time I draw my hand, it's like always different two of hand traps, right? Because I do play two of each. And the chances of that happening is like way higher. So that's why I stop the mirror match a lot because I always draw two variety of different hand traps where I think some people are kind of stuck playing like three of everything and then they draw two of the same ones and that doesn't stop the combo at all. So that's it uh, for the main deck, the 40 cards. Pretty How was Nip for you? I don't know, man. Yeah, Nib was actually uh, pretty crazy, actually. I didn't play that much cash. I originally wanted it in because I noticed that a lot of cash players, they, they tend to get really greedy because they want to lock your pendulum zones. And I, and I think most people after like round two or something, you know, not to like uh, have an ego, but like most people have watched my games a lot. So like people pretty much know what I'm playing after like round two. And I figured if I have this in my deck, they're gonna try to lock my pendulum zones and I can like nib them. But that didn't really happen. Uh, but I did resolve this against Super Heavy a lot. And even if you resolve this against Super Heavy, against like when they make like um, Excel plus something, um, it actually weakens their board a lot, right? So like I actually can, I feel like a lot of times I actually broke, I actually broke a few Super Heavy Samurai boards when I just had nib by itself. Like I'll nib by itself, they'll end on something, but then it's fine because my engine can actually like push through and we'll have a grind game back and forth. And I won a lot of those games actually, so I don't even mind drawing this wall. I kind of want to bump this up to three if I had room. 
Uh, but like with the same theory of trying to draw different hand traps, I think two is uh, fine. But this card was actually amazing. We're not. Yep. And then let's go with the uh, extra deck really quick. All right, two Scarecrow, standard, genius for your combo, Ballista, uh, for your combo, uh, Axis Code, and Unicorn to kill. I never actually summoned this, so I might cut this for like utility cards. I was thinking about maybe playing Alsa and maybe playing Nightmare Phoenix because I actually lost to a There Can Be Only One today, and I could have outed it if I played Phoenix, funny enough. Um, so maybe that's something to consider, or even the Malong card, right, to out uh, Five Rainbow. Um, but I do uh, think it has to be a card to remove some like floodgate cards because you know people are targeting this deck, they're trying to floodgate it, and uh, you do want the outs to that. Uh, Appaloosa, party end board. Uh, Burrow, broken. Uh, this was a last minute pick, uh, Savage. I actually put this in because when we were testing uh, like Friday night, I realized I, I sometimes could not run over a defense position Zeus, or I couldn't even run over like big monsters sometimes. And the Savage is like really nice because you want to be able to run over their monster, pass turn, and have something to stop their follow-up. And this card was like the best card at doing that. And also, uh, a lot of times, because I cut Spell Cancel last minute from the deck because I feel like I was just going to get hand-trapped all day. If you play against Branded, you actually need to put up more negates because they actually can start breaking her board with all engine. Uh, sometimes if they draw like like actually good enough. Um, so the Savage was another layer of negate that was good against Branded. It helped me run over big monsters, and I summoned it a lot. Um, it was really good. I liked it. I was playing it. Uh, Excel, Standard for the combo, Saratobi. I, I see people would never summon this for some reason. I summon it every game. It's so broken. Um, it's really good in the mirror. It's good against Purely. A lot of people don't summon this in the mirror because they're like, I don't get why it's good. It just pops Spell and Trap. But, like, dude, it pops Wakashi, which is, like, literally the one extender. Like, it's it's crazy. I If I have a leftover Wakashi at the end, I'll always try to make this because this adds so much pressure to the board. And if they play, like, Kashtira, you just pop Field Spell, pop Birth. They can't continue. Like, good against Kashtira, good against the mirror match, good against Purely. Like, this card's actually really, really good. I like it a lot. Um, then Zeus, shout out to Michael, I need to give this back. <laughs> and then uh, Baguska, uh, this card says uh, if you draw me, summon this. So it got summoned pretty much all day because I got drawled all day. But that's pretty expected when you're playing this deck. So, And then Merrymaker and Sargus, crazy search regulus and format Zeus. Um, just nothing to say, crazy card. Alright, and then for the side. So like I said, the Spice, uh, two Peacemakers, these are like called by and Designator. I was actually going to play Regulus going first too, because I think that's also like a um, a card that's really good going first that helps you play through a lot of hand traps. Uh, but it's $60, so uh, we're going with Peacemaker today. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> but, yes. Yeah, but I would definitely consider playing Regulus going uh, first. I think the card's like pretty absurd. Uh, this card's really nice. Every time I drew this, when I got drolled, it still let me combo. And uh, I played, there was a game where I got uh, Joel, Ogre, and Baylor, and I still put up a war. And it was thanks to like hard drawing this card. So I think this card, I treat it as called by. And um, it was really, really good. Because obviously you can't play called by or tactics. So this is really, really good. Engine card going first. It's really nice. Uh, three eccentric. Uh, this card's fine. Uh, I actually got Vanity Fiend the week before, so I didn't play the Sage card that people were playing. And I think this card is just really clean at outing cards. Uh, the Sage card requires you to have a monster, so sometimes it can be a little bit awkward. And I think this is just like the safe standard one, so I just played eccentric. And then 2DD Crow, Magnema, and Drew Swarm, best card on my freaking side. I played three Math Mech and three Branded. I cited this in all day. If you resolve this card, they can't win. <laughs> if you, uh, draw this against uh, Sigma or like Super Factorial or stuff like that, you just can't lose. I uh, hit so many Albions today, uh, Brandon, Red, I never got Expulsion because I played these and Infinite Hand Traps, so that was nice. Well, actually, I got Expulsion once, but I won that match. Um, but yeah, it was all like thanks to these cards. Like, if I knew my matchups, I would just main these. Like, Magnema, it's so broken. It literally should be banned, but uh, actually, no, it shouldn't because uh, I don't want to lose the Math Mech. <laughs> so, that's crazy. Two Karikura. I'm borrowing this from Brian, so shouts to him. Uh, I never actually used it because I only played one cash and, and it came up, but uh, not really. Um, it could have won me a game against Math Mech because um, you can hit Firewall now and Owl Inversion, which is like pretty solid. Uh, and if I drew it, I actually would have won that game against Math Mech, but I didn't draw it, but I won that match anyway, so it's fine. Um, I don't know if I play it again. It's good. Um, it's, it's a good card, so I would play it. I'm not sure if I would um, play it again, though, because, uh, yeah, I never used it, that's why. And last card was two Gamma Seal, same thing. Um, it was like Nib and this, so it's like they just pick their poison, right? Like Kashira, I want them to, like, 
I want them to never have like a route to like a safe route to go into anything they do. If they want to zone lock, I have nib. If they want to go rise pass, I have this. So like they can't really escape. I really like the idea against cash that you have a variety of things so that their board is never like actually perfect. And that's about it. Anything else? All right, cool. That's about it. Like, comment, subscribe to uh, me because it's my own channel. But uh, <laughs> that'll be it for this one. Uh, more videos out this week, and I'll see you. See y'all next time.